Hi everyone, so today I am joined by Vicky Gordon. Vicky is mum to Emily and Harry, who are twins. They're five years old and she's been a professional nanny now for 21 years. Um, today, Vicky shares with us what motivated her to become a sleep consultant and how she's juggled building her own business alongside nannying and raising her twins. So she's going to tell us of the challenges and the rewards and why this has been great during the craziness of 2020 as well. So Vicky, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Hi. It's really good to have you. Um, so to start with, let's just delve in with you know, being a nanny yeah. and working with lots of other children before you even had children as well. Um, you must have witnessed a lot of little ones having sleep challenges. Um, all kinds of different challenges was this in any way part of your motivation to become a sleep consultant as well it was to a certain extent um obviously being a nanny for so long I was yeah really young when I started um and like any job you kind of evolve in it and you find your confidence um while with a family and then you join a new family and you find more confidence so to begin with it was very much I did what the parents asked um sleep wise you know if that was rocking the child to sleep obviously I did it um if it was cry out methods you know I did that I followed whatever I was asked to follow um but then just as I got more experience I was more aware of different ways that different parents did things um so I felt more confident just to suggest different ideas for families if they were struggling um I never had the science behind it I just had a few books um and ultimately, obviously, it was always up to the parents. I was there to help support them with their children, not with their sleep. So, so yeah, I, it did. It intrigued me, um, and it intrigued me even then how people would let themselves get to such a point. I mean, the last family I worked for, long term, and before my own, the father ended up with severe insomnia, and it was purely because of how the youngest had slept as a baby um so so yeah it was quite interesting seeing how it could affect but obviously not knowing the science at the time I didn't really understand why all of that was happening so yeah it was, it was interesting um, and yeah it definitely obviously put some sort of starting points in there to sort of yeah. when I've you know finished with nannying how can I go on to help parents a bit more in another way Sure. Like a stepping stone, nice transition. Yeah. yeah. Do you apply your sleep knowledge now when working with families as a nanny? I do, but I do tend to wait for them to ask. Yeah, um, so you don't push it upon them. <laughs> yeah, I won't necessarily, because um, since having my own, I've had a lot more short term roles. Um, and I won't necessarily, when I go for an interview, jump on the fact that I'm a sleep consultant I mean in, in some cases it doesn't matter because they're older anyway and they're very settled um but when they're littler ones I do sort of drop it in at some point um and then you know if they if they bring up sleep enough times you know because we all talk about sleep so much you don't want to instantly be jumping down someone's throat when actually they're like but it's okay you know we we don't need that help we're all right this is okay it was a one-off or something like that um but you can you can get the gist of when they want maybe a bit more guidance. Um, so yeah, and it, it's obviously very helpful because now I'm not just sort of giving them advice that I've got from one or two books. Um, it's you know I've got the science behind it and all the the details that they need. So mm. I think it helps sort of, and it, it's right. good for me. Well, for, you know, with little ones. I mean, I've got little eight month olds at the moment. So you know they're their sleep's a bit all over the place so you know we're working together on that and I think she appreciates that I'm not just guessing you know there's the, the knowledge as it were behind it yeah yeah the expertise not just uh you're not just doing the child care but you're also hopefully helping to shape them into good yeah. little sleepers yeah exactly. looking after them brilliant amazing how about your two how about your twins what do they think now they're you know they're five they're at school they're much more aware of everything what do they think of mummy's job do they know what you do yeah um they both know um harry is just 
I think if you asked him, he'd be able to tell you, but it depends what day it is. He might make something random <laughs> up because he's a five-year-old boy. Yeah. Um, you know, he might want me to be an astronaut, so he might just say that. <laughs> but but Emily, yeah, she knows um, and she tells everyone. I did have to correct her because she used to say, mommy puts babies to sleep. So oh. I, I worked on correcting that one. Um, but yeah, she says I help babies sleep um, and that I look after babies. Um, they don't necessarily know I nanny because I find that a bit touchy. Sort of, mummy goes and plays with other children and they have to go to school. So yeah. I don't drop that in so much. Um, they think I go there to help them sleep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so they know. And Emily thinks, I mean, Emily loves babies and children as well. So quite often you'll hear her, you know, talking to the babies and then she'll bring them to me and say, can you give them a cuddle and put them to sleep, please? <laughs> like, it's not quite that simple, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously it is with a doll, but so yeah. It's, they know, um, and Emily thinks it's great, um, but would like to come with me to help these babies. So. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> Typical little girl. That's yeah, lovely. she is. <laughs> <Very much sweet. laughs> oh, no, I think it's really empowering as well for children at school age to see mums and dads, you know, doing something meaningful and um, having a profession. And um, I think it's inspiring. I think it's great um, role modeling on your part yeah. for them to see that. Um, yeah, well, she, Emily nice. will copy, you know, she'll go and get a notebook and a, a toy phone and be like, I've got a call to do. And then she'll, <laughs> she'll make little notes. She has no idea what my notes say, but you know, she'll go and do that. And she'll ask to take things from my printer and, you know, she she sees that there's more to it than just me going somewhere or me yeah. having a phone call. You know, she sees all the paperwork and things. And yeah, yeah it, is, it is sweet, her copying. Harry is different. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> not so worried, but yeah. I think they are. My daughter's the same. And yes, I'm not doing that. But my daughter loves a desk and, you know, yeah. to sit down and, you know, feel like, right, I'm going to do something. And until she had her own desk, she would bring her homework to mine and want to sit at mummy's desk and yeah. I think yeah I think girls like to copy us a little bit like they that do. <laughs> sure some boys do too yeah um, no, definitely so how about this crazy year I mean let's face it it's been a obscure year for everybody um how have you found sleep consulting in 2020 um yeah I found it good um people were definitely dedicated to getting mm. things sorted um and it I think maybe it was slightly not easier for them but in a lot of cases especially first time around mum and dad tended to be home so there was yeah. both of them maybe dad was slightly more aware of what was going on during the day because mm. he was working from home or or you know vice versa if the mum was home more instead of the baby being at nursery or something um so there was a lot more um sort of maybe dedication is the wrong word because everyone I work with is dedicated but just they're both more on the same page I think and that helped yeah. um, I think that's a really key point actually that awareness because like you say if one parent typically is out working and really only sort of bookends of the day or maybe the weekend that they're around they're going to be less aware of the impact so whilst they might hear from their partner of maybe the trials and tribulations of being exhausted they're not feeling it they're just yeah. hearing it secondhand whereas if like you know we've had periods of being at home homeschooling juggling work at home and so yeah that's a really valid point actually I bet a lot more parents have had a real taste of oh okay this is what it's like and yeah and actually really feel rather than just hear yeah how challenging it can be so that's a really good point yeah yeah no and you know sort of mums were worried because you know I mean I'm saying this because this is just the example obviously it can be either way around but mums yeah. were sort of like oh you know I've got a crying baby a bored you know preschooler and their dad's trying to do some work um and you know her stress levels were even higher because she was trying to protect the work environment and you know she she maybe didn't realize before that baby was sleeping because they were in the car because they were going to a preschool or activity or you know or vice mm. versa with a baby class and yeah it, it showed up a lot more sleep problems um but yeah it was it's been an interesting year for sure definitely. <laughs> yeah definitely those those transitions that like you say between 
baby classes or toddler classes, um, just parents that maybe walk or walk and do school runs or, or the day-to-day -day movement and routine of life um, could, could quite easily mask sleep yeah. challenges because little ones kind of nodding off and they're, they're getting by um, and maybe at nursery or whatever and it just maybe didn't show and then suddenly everything's revealed <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, oh actually my child isn't particularly great at sleeping after all yeah um, that's it. and then they raise their hands so did you find a way to make this um work for you online and obviously for yourself because you had to be at home and your little ones yeah. at home and your husband at home so you know you're in that boat too so did you find a way to make that work um working online with families and were there any upsides to it as well yeah <laughs> no there were definitely stressful. upsides um I think it showed me that like personally it taught me how to become even more organized and instead of just being one step ahead of myself I had to be like two or three steps ahead um, I had to sort of, obviously, I was doing a small amount of homeschooling. They were only in reception at that time. So the school were amazing. I didn't have reams of work to get through. Um, but, you know, my husband was working in one room. I used to work in another room. And then the children's playrooms next to that. So it could be chaotic. Um, my bedroom did turn into my office. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it took a few weeks to fall into like a nice pattern but once we got there and I started dedicating set hours for my support calls um which I think clients quite well clients didn't necessarily know anyway if you say I'm only available for this time they don't know that you're running around like a headless chicken for the other time you know it's they sort of like oh that's the time slot so that's fine um but yeah we soon got into quite a good rhythm um and yeah, and it worked really well. So there was definitely some positives. Um, it was hard going, but that was just lockdown. I don't think that was yeah. me running a business that was hard going. It was just the whole environment, everything added together. Um, but yeah, it was it was interesting. And thankfully, my two were you know very good at knowing that if mummy had to go and do a phone call and daddy was doing one as well, then they just had to, you know, get on for that little bit <laughs> you know they they soon realized how long you know if mommy said like 20 minutes or 30 minutes it'd be fine yeah um, there was a bit of bribery but, yeah <laughs> here's well, a tablet go and play <laughs> yeah do you think it helped then would you say being organized and perhaps having sort of de designated spaces for things so this is work environment this is we're going to play in here like do you think that sort of organization helped you get into a good rhythm yeah, de definitely. I mean, I like to be organised anyway, but um, it just had to be that bit more. Um, and, you know, it, I mean, it helped you teach the children as well. But, you know, mm. like, for example, when I was working in the dining room, this section of the table is no go. You've got yeah. all of this, but this bit, yeah. you don't touch anything, you don't move anything because it's mummy's space. Yeah. Um, so it helped teach them certain skills as well, That's like, nice. you know, not just everything theirs you know yeah. um but yeah, yeah it, respect and things like respecting yeah. each other's property and yeah that's really good that's really it. valuable lessons and yeah um yeah just I like being organized so it was fairly easy for me to get into that flow um like I say it just took a couple of weeks to find our feet with it all do you think they enjoyed being at home more and being around you or do you think they were itching to get back to at, seeing at their first, friends at first they were fine um but Emily quite quickly wanted to get back to friends she's very social um and then I think Harry kind of just missed the noise he doesn't he's still a very much a parallel player you know he'll play yeah. alongside someone not pick someone out to play with um but yeah he just he missed the sort of learning side of it and the yeah. environment of school and things so they were both very pleased when they went back yeah I think it's so good for them it really is I mean I know lots of people talk about the benefits of having that family time and and great and I love that people found positives and could mm. appreciate those things but it is challenging and also I think for a prolonged period of time it's not healthy for people to just be around the same few people every day I think we all yeah, need a exactly. little bit of change and then you know different even just different thoughts and ideas coming from people because if we're all just around the same thoughts and opinions and and woes and whatever's it can just be a little yeah narrowing yeah. And, and to have that 
yeah freedom and seeing other people can yeah just so good for every children and adults exactly. alike you know they just they world. weren't as stimulated I didn't find mm. um you know they didn't have that they weren't as exhausted come the evening because they just didn't have so much going on um, Interesting. in their little yeah. lives you know there mm. wasn't the they didn't have the same things to look forward to even though we tried to say like oh you know like when it came up to east oh we'll have our easter egg hunt and we'll do this but there just wasn't the same sort of things to plan out yeah. and yeah they just they just weren't quite as excited about life uh, <laughs> which is sad when you're only four years yeah. old um, i think actually the there's lots of um uh, there's a lot to be said actually for just the mental um, tiring <laughs> that you get from school, not just through doing schoolwork, of course, even at reception in the early few years, mm. but um, not just through actual schoolwork, but just the social and the, I always say like the being brave energy, when you're being brave in, a, in that environment more so than at home where you just feel so relaxed, mm. it takes up a certain amount of energy. And I wonder if actually lots of little ones that had bedtimes creeping a little bit later because they weren't quite so tired and and then those yeah. led to knock-on effects because we definitely saw right through the summer you know we had an influx in families with school-age children raising their hands and going we've got some problems yeah. um so I can imagine it did play a part actually in yeah. um, messing with kiddies sleep schedules yeah no mine just naturally didn't fall asleep as quickly um mm. and a few of my clients were really struggling more than normal with naps and mm. I was convinced it was because these little ones weren't just simple things like going to the supermarket they weren't doing that um and so they didn't just get that visual stimulation and that sort of you know all those colors and shapes and different faces it it's surprising how much for a little one that can exhaust them I mean we take it for granted but yeah it's yeah. everyday kind of activities like that that they were missing um so yeah, it, it was just sort of, the, yeah. the exhaustion wasn't there always for everyone or the sort of, mm. you know, oh, that was a busy morning. I'll have a nice, nice nap now because, you know, I've learned all the other skills um, to go with it. But yeah, it's, but who knows? Who knows if that's what it was or not? <laughs> Certainly something was going on. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so what do you personally enjoy most about being a sleep consultant? The end result seeing those families and how you've changed you know so much for them um I've just literally signed off with a family um and the mum um wasn't in a great place herself um you know her husband was unable to help because um it was a breastfeeding mum um and baby solely relied on her for bedtime and nap time um she was getting no sleep she couldn't sleep even when baby did sleep um and just hearing how her whole day has changed you know she enjoys sitting while baby naps now she can relax because she knows that baby's going to get a good amount of sleep she's not going to sit down and suddenly have to go and resettle baby again um she was co-sleeping um at first she wanted to carry on doing that which I said was fine um and then she was actually no let's let's see how she goes in her own room. Um, and she did, and she did really well, the little girl, superstar. Um, and so the mum's back in with the dad now. And, you know, so she just feels that she has now what she envisaged when she was pregnant. Um, and, yeah. it's, you know, dad can get involved um, and do bedtime. So she gets a little bit of an evening sometimes. Um, and yeah, just when you hear things like that, you just feel that, you know, it's, it's such a nice thing to hear because you've really changed someone's life, you know, and mm -hmm. sort of, they didn't necessarily even think that they'd get there, you know, and sort of they see it and it's just, yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's, and the ones just, you know, thrive as well. Yeah. Um, and that when, when a client says, oh, they just seem so much happier during the day and you're like, well, yeah, they're not as tired, you know, so it's, yeah that's the best bit sort of at the end when you've got them even you know because not everyone comes to me and says, like, oh I want them sleeping through I want them doing this just to get them to whatever their personal goal was is just fantastic 
Um, yeah, it's much more than just the little one sleep, isn't it? Like you just described all those things that that mother who felt probably very drained and like it was all on her now mm -hmm. feels that, oh, this isn't all on me. We're a family. We share this. And she's like you said, getting to enjoy the, the fantasy of what she saw motherhood as before having a baby rather than muddling through exhausted and not really getting to appreciate that time, because I think yeah. it can become a blur if you just muddle through exhausted and so it's way bigger than just the child's sleep itself, which is yeah. huge anyway, because we know how vital it is for their own development and well-being. But the, the the big effect that you just described there on that impact on that family, yeah, I completely get why that's yeah. that's a buzz to know you've been a part of that. Yeah, I know yeah. it's incredible, incredible work. Well done. <laughs> so based on all the families you work with, things you've seen, the challenges you come across. If you had a magic wand that could just solve one sleep challenge, one particular area that parents suffer from, um, what specific thing would you want to use that magic wand for? If you could just go, ping, that's fixed. <laughs> it's a close one. Um, I think early morning, early morning rising, early wake ups, just because I, I know personally how hard it is because I'm in a constant battle with Harry. Um, so, you know, you can, it is, I, yeah, that's the one. It's just the hardest one I find to fix. It takes the longest um, amount of time to fix with sometimes such small gradual changes um, that it's one that's very easy to just go, this isn't working, you know, I'm just going to give up. So if I could have a magic wand for that one, I think that's what it would be um because it's just hard <laughs> it's just oh, a very with you. Hard one. totally with you I I endured that with my eldest and um yeah I know the pains of it and I see it for parents I think it's also for us in our in the stages of our sleep it's the worst time to be disturbed from sleep and so you feel the most kind of irritated by it and groggy and the effects it has and like you said it can be a slow one to resolve as well yeah. because there are lots of pieces of the puzzle to fix in order to overcome that so um yeah support you well let's see if we can work up a magic yeah. <laughs> some magic fairy dust for that one that would be, that would be good that would be good wouldn't it but Best no, it sadly, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely sadly it does take it does take work but and you know we know we know we can get parents there but I agree yeah. with you it takes a lot of commitment to persevere even when it feels like you're actually getting nowhere you could be just two more nights away from a success but it's keeping going even when it feels like you're not getting anywhere because yeah it does take some time that one yeah it does and obviously there's always things thrown in you just start getting somewhere and then the you know mornings start getting lighter and you like yeah. just gets back again or you know the clocks change so yeah it's yeah. that's the one for sure yeah. good but one very dust <laughs> yeah that would be good definitely oh that's brilliant Vicky it's been such a pleasure chatting with you and hearing your insights and um you know just getting a feel for who you are and how it all looks from your perspective so thank you so so much for joining us and, and sharing all this with us today you're very welcome thank you for having me oh you're welcome so what we'll do we'll drop some links um under this and make sure people can find you where's the best place for people to hang out with you what is there a particular platform that you feel you're most uh most on instagram just because it's easier to find yeah. on that one um so yeah vicky underscore sleep underscore consultant there you go vicky underscore sleep yeah. underscore consultant and i know uh you share loads of great tips over on there as well so um if people go over there follow vicky and um and absorb her tips and then you can reach out to vicky as well grab yourself a chat with her and she'll let you know if she feels that you know she can help you um, I'm sure she can, but she'll have a conversation with you first and see what's going on and um, and see if it's it's a good fit. So if you'd like to get Vicky's help, I know she's more than happy to, to speak with you. So we'll share all of those as well um, in the comments so people can reach out to you. Vicky, it's Thank been a you. pleasure. You take Thank care. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag TheSleepNanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.